Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan Crone. I'm the managing member and founder of the Crone Law Firm. We're a law firm uh, here in Memphis, Tennessee that represents employees, executives, and entrepreneurs in legal disputes and legal matters concerning their ability uh, to make money, uh, concerning their employment or their uh, jobs or uh, businesses that they might own. Uh, if you want to reach us, our phone number is 901-737-7740. Uh, and our website is cronelawfirmplc.com. And if you go to that website, uh, you can learn about our firm and you can also learn uh, a lot about uh, employment law and employment related uh, legal disputes. Today, we're going to talk about uh, a topic that frequently comes up. We get a lot of calls. We get a lot of uh, inquiries about severance agreements. And some people call us and want us to review a severance agreement after uh, they receive it. Uh, some people call us because they're upset. They got fired and they didn't get a severance agreement. And so I would say not a day goes by that we don't deal in some sort of way uh, with separation agreements or severance agreements uh, here at the Crone Law Firm. Uh, so let's uh, dive into these frequently asked questions. The first question is very simple. What is a severance agreement? And as I've indicated, uh, a severance agreement can be known by many names. Sometimes it's severance, sometimes it's separation, sometimes it's a separation agreement and release. And basically what a separation agreement is or a severance agreement is, it's an agreement between a company and someone who's about to become a former employee uh, that tries to resolve any disputes that they may have about um, their employment and provide some compensation uh, on their way out the door. And there's no standard severance agreement and there's uh, no uh, typical way that this is, is given. Each uh, situation is different. Each severance agreement kind of stands on its own, although there's some circumstances that we'll, we'll uh, delve into in a minute that may cover uh, a, a large number of uh, employees at one time. Uh, but the, the company uh, creates a severance agreement and they largely will dictate what the, the terms of it will be, excuse me, will be. Uh, I know that there's some companies that have longstanding policies or practices about uh, a, a certain amount of severance uh, per maybe maybe it's one week of, of salary for every year that uh, uh, the of service that an employee has. Sometimes you see that. Um, sometimes they just uh, put what they think is fair, uh, depending upon the uh, length and term of service of the employee. The larger the company, typically, the more formalized that particular policy or practice would be. Um, a lot of people ask us: Is a severance package? separation agreement required by law? The answer is no. Uh, the company doesn't have to offer you any severance, uh, either severance pay or an agreement. Uh, many times they, they do because what they're trying to do is get a release from the employee that would release them from any liability, either known or unknown at the time of the separation. And that way both parties can move on and uh, not look back at the previous relationship. But uh, many people feel entitled to severance and perhaps on a moral, ethical, or practical level, maybe they're right. They've given a lot of years of service to a particular company and sometimes a termination decision uh, comes out of left field. You don't know that it's coming. It may be a reduction in force. It may be um, a new manager who's decided that he or she uh, wants to uh, change up their team. There are a lot of reasons why uh, a, uh, a person could get fired for no reason, uh, you know, no fault of their own. And people feel like, well, you know, if that's going to happen, then I need uh, some money to get me from now until the time I get a new job. And uh, oftentimes that's what a separation agreement is, is designed to do. And that may be the moral thing to do. It may be the ethical thing to do, um, but that not necessarily the legal thing to do. Um, and if you're presented with one, uh, can you negotiate a severance agreement? And I, I always say that any agreement is negotiable. Uh, now, whether or not you can negotiate terms that are 
uh, acceptable to you and, and pleasing to you is a different story. Uh, a lot of times, the degree to which the company will negotiate is governed by a couple of factors. One is, is it a reduction in force? In other words, are you the only person being handed this severance agreement? Again, typically, every situation is different, but typically, uh, companies decide what they're going to pay in severance and a reduction in force, and that pretty much is the uh, the deal, and they're not willing to negotiate it because they want everybody to be offered the same deal, and they don't want to have to go back and renegotiate with people or for it to get around, well, one employee got more than another employee uh, did. And so in those circumstances, uh, it's typically not negotiable, uh, but under certain circumstances, you may have some leverage if you can show exceptional circumstances. Another uh, situation is if it's a one-off, in other words, if, if a person's being fired for a particular reason, it's not part of a, a larger reduction in force, then that, that severance agreement may be a little bit more negotiable. And there are lots of bases to negotiate a severance agreement. The biggest is, do you have a claim? Is there a claim for uh, unfair termination, discrimination, harassment, or retaliation arising out of the employment that the employer would like to get a release from? If the answer is yes, if there's a colorable claim, then uh, the severance negotiation can be about what the value of that claim is and is the severance agreement um, commiserate with the uh, claims being released. And that can take some time. I'd say typically uh, the over-under on that is 120 days. Sometimes it can take longer, sometimes it can take shorter. Um, but to engage in those negotiations and for both sides to do the investigation that they need to do in order to have those negotiations, it can take it can take uh, a couple, three, sometimes even four months between the time of termination and actually signing uh, the agreement. And sometimes you can negotiate severance agreements, uh, severance payments particularly, uh, based on the length of tenure or just fairness. There are many employers who, uh, particularly if they if they are firing someone not for cause or because the person is poorly performed, but for some other reason, sometimes you can leverage that goodwill into a, a, a larger uh, severance package. Now, I caution employers and say that they really shouldn't do that. They really should have a policy that if you're going to offer severance, you ought to have a uniform policy that is applied uh, across the board um, for precisely that reason. You don't want to be accused later of favoring one type of employee over another. And if every severance is kind of its own negotiation, they can take on a life of their own. And that may not be a, a situation uh, for business reasons that um, you want to find yourself in. Uh, employees should always uh, try to negotiate uh, because you just, you never know what, uh, you never know what the situation is. Sometimes uh, employers on those one-off situations will say, well, let's start out with this amount and see if, uh, if he or she takes it and we can always negotiate it up or down. Uh, as I say, with reductions in force, typically uh, the company makes a decision on what it's going to offer, and it really is a, a take it or leave it situation, and it uh, puts the employee a little bit in a trick bag because if the employee has, uh, say, a wrongful termination claim and they don't feel that the severance is uh, uh, appropriate, then that may put them in the, the position of having to turn the severance down and then litigate their case. And oftentimes uh, uh, that can elongate the process a little bit and it's a little bit more risky and that makes it a very difficult decision. And, and I frequently spend a lot of time with, uh, with clients uh, examining their particular situation and weighing the pros and cons, um, particularly if the amount of severance is enough that um, they believe walking away from it would be a, a tough thing to do. So definitely not a, an easy negotiation or risk-free negotiation, but but often uh, a necessary one. Um, what kinds of terms are in a typical severance agreement? That's a great that's a great question. Uh, typically, the first term uh, uh, is what kind of severance payment is there going to be? Uh, one week's, two weeks' pay, six months' pay, two years' pay, or just a number. 
So how much severance payments are going to be made? The next one might be what's going to happen with health insurance. Is, is COBRA an issue? Is the person going to be on uh, the payroll for a particular period of time and then um, uh, terminated and then COBRA uh, so that that elongates the, the, uh, the, the health insurance? Uh, in one-off situations, particularly, sometimes that can be negotiated. Sometimes there'll be a provision in the agreement uh, that the uh, employee will provide some consulting services or be available for consulting services as a transition as part of the, uh, the consideration for the, uh, the payments. Frequently, there's a non-competition or a non-solicitation, confidentiality provision, or other restriction on the employee's ability to get an, uh, a future job. We did a, uh, a Facebook live chat about that not too terribly long ago that we spent uh, one whole uh, show talking about non-competes and, and non-solicitation clauses and that sort of thing. But that really does affect the value of the severance agreement um, if um, uh, the payments aren't relational to the amount of time that uh, the, uh, wor the worker has to be uh, out of the workforce as part of the agreement. So you really want to make sure that you, that you really analyze that carefully uh, and find out if the payments are being made uh, compensate you fairly for the, uh, the restrictions that it may put on you. As I say, one of the big provisions is going to be a release of liability. Uh, every, separate, every severance agreement or separation agreement uh, should contain, if the employer is smart, a release of all liability for all known and unknown claims up to that point in time. And so that's one area where you really want to ask a lawyer, hey, am I signing away a bunch of rights that I may not realize uh, that I have? And, um, and are those rights that I'm signing away commiserate relational to the, uh, the separation pay that's, that's being made. If you're an employee over 40, then the Older Workers Benefit Act requires the employer to give you 21 days to review the document. Should, it should tell you, uh, advise you to consult an attorney, and then it would give you seven days after you sign it to revoke your acceptance. And so if you see those in a separation agreement, uh, some people take that personally because it, it seems kind of strange, but the reason that uh, those terms are in there is to comply with the Older Workers uh, Benefit Act. You should always, when presented with, with one of these agreements, before you sign it, it's a good investment to hire a lawyer uh, for a consult a consultation and for that lawyer to go over with you the terms of the agreement, make sure you understand uh, what you're signing. Uh, severance agreements can uh, also contain uh, cooperation clauses that may require the worker to cooperate uh, with litigation or investigations, uh, that sort of thing on an ongoing basis. Um, and uh, uh, those, are, those are the primary uh, terms of an agreement like that. Uh, and one thing you want to look for is what are the penalties for violating the agreement? Uh, the, pro the agreement may say that, that uh, the, the company is entitled to an injunction. It may say that if you violate the agreement and they have to uh, enforce the agreement that uh, you have to pay their attorney's fees and costs of expenses of, of, of pursuing you. It's just really good to understand what all of those uh, uh, clauses uh, mean. Um, and so should I sign a, the severance, a, a severance agreement? Well, if it's a good deal, you should sign it. And sometimes it's uh, whether or not it's a good deal is a relative term. When you're out of work and somebody's offered you X number of weeks of, of uh, pay, uh, it looks awfully tempting. And if you don't have a, a claim against them and that there are no unreasonable restrictions on your ability to get another job, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with signing a severance agreement. Um, there's also absolutely nothing wrong uh, with if you do have a a, um, a claim and that cl and the you can negotiate a uh, uh, suitable uh, consideration for the release signing it and moving on with your life because that certainly is preferable than uh, than engaging in litigation uh, but you don't want to sign a severance agreement if you read it and you say this just isn't fair and if you don't think it's fair you should have an attorney review it and the, the attorney may say you know I know it doesn't look fair and it may not be fair, but they really don't have to pay you this anyway. 
and uh, it's at least it's something uh, rather than nothing. And uh, you may want to hold your nose and sign it because the money could come in handy. Sometimes you look at these agreements, and I and I've said to many people, uh, there's there's no incentive for you to sign this. They're asking you to uh, not solicit customers for uh, two years, and they're offering you two weeks worth of, of severance. Uh, that's just not enough to justify the restrictions they want to put on you. Or you've got an excellent claim for sex discrimination or age discrimination or race discrimination or retaliation of some sort, and this five months of, of, uh, of uh, severance doesn't fairly compensate you. One uh, area that you really want to be careful on from that standpoint is making sure that before you sign it, you've been paid any uh, expense reimbursements that are outstanding, uh, any pay paychecks that uh, that they may owe you, commissions. Um, you don't want to sign one of those agreements without having uh, considered and contained in the agreement anything that the company might owe you up to that point. And um, sometimes there may be an outstanding workers' comp claim or other claims. You want to make sure that that you're not releasing those kinds of claims at the same time that you're accepting some severance that otherwise is a, is a good deal. So um, I really do encourage people before they sign anything uh, to call and get a good employment lawyer uh, to review their agreement and make sure they understand what it is they're signing away. Um, and, and that brings me to my last question, which is, can a lawyer help me with my severance agreement? Absolutely. Uh, a lawyer can help you, uh, even if they don't negotiate new terms for you, it's Im important for a lawyer to explain to you what all of the clauses, what all of the terms mean. Some of them are pretty clear and uh, pretty, uh, pretty concise and easy to understand. But some of them, the, the legal implication of them may not be what you think they mean. You may read a, uh, a non-solicitation uh, clause, for example, and it may even say non-competition agreement, and then you read what it says, and it's not really a full non-competition agreement, it just says that you can't contact certain customers, or it may mean that you can't contact and recruit employees away. Sometimes it may be a bigger limitation than, than it appears to be. So uh, making sure that a, that a lawyer confirms your understanding can be just as important as uh, hiring a lawyer to actually change the terms of the, uh, of the, the separation agreement. In terms of negotiating it, I, I would say frequently, uh, after a consultation with a client, uh, I'll say, you know, here are the, the negotiating points. It may be better for you, the client, to just go back and talk to these folks rather than getting a lawyer involved because some people, people re sometimes people overreact to a lawyer coming in. Sometimes you need that formality of a lawyer. And so uh, a lot of times whether a lawyer can help really depends on the psychology of the situation, the uh, relative negotiating positions between the parties, <coughs> and your relationship with your former employee, uh, employer. And so uh, one thing I'm really going to do if I'm the attorney in a consultation like that is I'm going to explore with you whether I can add value in the negotiating process or if I can give you some bullet points and some pointers and send you back to negotiate it yourself. Some people are very adept at that. I have a lot of salespeople who come see me and they, they're not concerned at all about negotiating. They negotiate for a living. They negotiate every day. They negotiate with all kinds of folks. So they're, they're perfectly comfortable going back with some tips. Also, then I have other people that they don't want any confrontation. They don't want to deal with the former employer anymore. And they're more than happy to, to pay a little bit of money to have this negotiated by, um, by someone else. And so we're happy to do that. And we try to conform uh, our advice to those situations uh, to customize the situation for their, their benefit. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. I really enjoy uh, uh, giving this, uh, making these tapes and, and giving this advice to folks um, in an informal way, because sometimes that's all people really need to know is what their rights are and that helps them decide whether they want to go find an attorney or whether they can handle something or on their own. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please let me know. Uh, send me an email at acrone at uh, crone law firm 
plc.com or comment in the comment section, uh, hit like or whatever um, if you if you enjoyed uh, the program. Again, if you need uh, legal help, uh, please give us a call at 901-737-7740. That's 901-737-7740. Or visit our website at Crone Law Firm, PLC.com. Have a good weekend.